In this video, I want to add music to the project, and then also we'll talk about several other things along the way. To begin with, I want to show you how to do something called Zoom to Fit. It's a way of zooming out on your project so you can see the whole thing in the timeline in one window without having to scroll. Very useful. So it's Shift Z on the keyboard is the keyboard shortcut for that, and it's one I use all the time. It's worth memorizing. So Shift Z on three, two, one. And there you go, zoom to fit. I can see the whole thing. Great way to get an overview. Okay, then I'm gonna move my playhead. I'm gonna move it to this edit point here between the baby smile clip and the interview 01 clip. And I wanna add another video clip there. So the one I wanna add is this one called swing slow motion. You might need to scroll to be able to see it. And what I'm gonna do is just kinda of skim towards the beginning of the clip here. And after the camera zooms in, maybe right around here, I'm going to, while I'm skimming, I'm just skimming over that frame there. I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard to set an end point. And then I'll continue skimming and I'll just skim all the way to the part where it's towards the end of the clip, maybe somewhere around here, I'll set an out point. It doesn't have to be exact. So I'll hit O on the keyboard to set an out point. So now I have a range selected. I'm going to insert it into my timeline. The playhead's already there. So with the clip selected, I can come down here and click insert and it inserts the clip. Let's take a look and see what we think of the timing. Here we go. Okay, not always. But once she could grow hair, she kept it long. And it was a significant part of her personal style. I am Trinity Heim. And I'll stop the playback. What I want to do is I want to have the clip end at the same time the voiceover ends. So I'm just going to click and drag on the edge of it here to trim that away. And it's going to snap right to the end of the voiceover clip. Let's take a look. Part of her personal style. I am Trinity Heim. Okay, I like that better. Now I want to attach music to the swing slow motion clip. I want to add music to the project and we have a lot of different options for doing this. One thing you can do is go to the photos and audio sidebar right here. I'll just click on that. And then inside here, you can grab photos if you want to add photos to your project, but you have several different options for music and sound. So for example, if you've made custom music in Logic or GarageBand, or if you have music in iTunes that isn't protected that you want to use in your project, I'm going to click on sound effects here. And then when I do this, you can see if I scroll through this, there's quite a few different sound effects on my computer. If you want to make sure you have the most possible, you can go up to the Final Cut Pro menu and choose to download additional content. And that'll get you more content than what comes in the original Final Cut Pro install. Anyway, I'm going to close this down and then I'll go to this pop-up menu. I have quite a few categories. One that you should have on your computer is this one that's called Theme Music. And I have a selection of pieces of music that are considered royalty free that you can use in a project. I'll just play the little play button here to get a quick sample of this travel one. I'll just hit the play button. Okay, so you get the idea. If I wanted to use this music, I could just click and drag it down into my project. Now, I'm not actually going to use the music that's in here because I provided a piece of music, custom music for this project. So I'm going to go back to the library sidebar and then go down to the audio event. And then there's this clip here called New Style. I'm going to skim to the beginning and hit the space bar to play it back. And I'll stop the playback. I'm going to click and drag this down into the project. I'm going to attach it as a connected clip right on that edit point there for swing slow motion. And then let's play it back. Okay, not always. But once she could grow hair, she kept it long. And it was a significant part of her personal style. One thing that can be helpful when you're working with music in Final Cut Pro is to add markers to the beat. So let's try that. I'm going to start by soloing the music. I've got the music selected and I'm going to come up here to the solo button and I'll solo it. And you can tell it's soloed. Everything else gets grayed out here except for the music. And then I'm going to move the playhead before the music starts. And then in a moment here, I'm going to play. I'll hit the space bar to play it. And then I'm going to tap M on the keyboard. M is for marker. It's going to add a marker to the music clip in my project every time I hit M. And I'm going to do that while it's playing back on the major beat. So here we go on three, two, one, play. M, 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 M. I'll do a couple more here. M. And I'll stop there. So I'll stop the playback. And now I have markers, as you can see, on the major beats of the music. Now, the advantage of using markers is that it makes it very easy for things to snap right to the location of the marker. So, for example, this edit point here, if I want that edit point to line up with the marker, all I have to do is just click on the edit point and drag it to the right, and you see it snaps right to the marker. 
And by the way, if you want to delete a marker, then what you can do is either control click or right click on it and choose delete. I'm going to hit Command Z because I actually want to keep that one. And if you want to delete all the markers, what you do is you just select it like this and then go up to the mark menu, go down to markers, and then there's this option here to delete markers in selection and all of them go away. I'm going to hit Command Z to bring those back. And I'll also unsolo the clip, make sure it's selected, go to the unsolo button to disable it. Now let's check the levels here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this back and I want to pay attention to how well I can hear the voiceover with the music playing in the background. Let's take a listen. Okay, not always. But once she could grow hair, she kept it long. And it was a significant part of her personal style. Okay, so the music is obviously competing with the voiceover. So what I need to do is have the music go into the background by making it more quiet. Now, how quiet? Well, it depends. It depends on the voice. It depends on the music. But let's try just reducing the volume to where it makes sense, to where we can easily hear the voiceover. So what I'll do is I'll start by moving the playhead to this position. And I'm going to select the voiceover clip, and I'm going to solo it. So I'll solo it and then I'm going to play this back. I'm going to watch the audio meter here to see what the average level of the voice is as well as the peaks. Let's take a listen. But once she could grow hair, she kept it long and it was a significant part of her personal style. So it looks like it was peaking a little above negative six and the average is right around negative 12. Okay, so now I'll solo the music. So I'm going to unsolo this clip. I'll select the music and then I'll solo that. And let's take a look at the audio levels for this. And I'll stop the playback. Looks like it was a little above negative 12. What I'm going to do now is unsolo the music and let's reduce the volume. There's this horizontal volume control right on the audio waveform. If you hover over it, it turns into this little icon there. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag on that to reduce the volume. And you can see that I don't have a very tall clip right now. So every little tiny movement with my mouse makes a big adjustment there. Let's say I want to bring it down to, I don't know, negative 15. Let's take a look and I'll play this back. But once she could grow hair, she kept it long, and it was a significant part of her personal style. That's pretty good. If I want to get in there closer to see the waveform bigger, one thing I can do is adjust the appearance of the clip. So I'm going to come up here to the appearance pop-up button again, and then here is the clip height slider. So I'm just going to click on it and drag it all the way to the right, and that'll make the clip as tall as possible. I'm gonna click here again to get out of this. I'm gonna scroll down and now look how big and beautiful the waveform is. And so what I'll do is I'll just click on the volume control here and let's just try bringing it up a little bit, maybe to negative 12. Let's take a listen. Not always. But once she could grow hair, she kept it long and it was a significant part of her personal style. I think that's fine. So the music is louder than it was before, but it's not really competing with the voiceover because it's definitely more quiet than it originally was. That's one way you can adjust the volume. Another way you can do it, by the way, is you can select the clip and open up the inspector, and then you go to the audio inspector, and there's a volume slider up here. I can click and drag on the slider to adjust it. And if I want to reset the volume, I can click on this little reset button here, and it returns it to zero. If I want to go back to negative 12, I can click here, type negative 12, and then hit return and it adjusts the volume. You can also adjust the pan here, by the way. So right now it says the pan mode is none, but if I change this to stereo because it's stereo audio, and then scroll down, then I get the slider here. And so if I wanna pan this all the way to the left, I'll just drag it to the left, and then let's play it back. But once she could grow hair, she kept it long. And then I'll pan it to the right. Let's take a listen. And it was a significant part of her personal. And then I'll stop playback, and I'm gonna come up here and reset it. And it's beyond the scope of this tutorial to go into audio configuration in much detail, but if you want to disable the audio on something, you can uncheck it here, and I can bring it back by checking it again. And if you want to change the configuration, maybe it's not supposed to be stereo, maybe it's supposed to be dual mono, so you could switch it over to that. In this case, it is supposed to be stereo, so I'll select that, and then I'll close down the inspector, and let's shrink the clips again. I'm going to click here and reduce the height of the clips, and then I'll scroll back up. While we're talking about audio, I should also show you the fade handles. If you want to fade audio in, they show up when you hover over the waveform, the audio waveform, and this over here on the far left edge is a fade handle. If you hover over it like that, then you get this little symbol, and I can click and drag and bring it in, and then over the course of a couple seconds here, I can have the audio fade in. Let's take a listen. But once she could grow hair, she kept it long, and it was a sig And I'll undo that. I'm going to hit Command Z to reset the fade handle. So if there's an audio waveform, you can hover over it to see the fade handle. That's for video as well. You can see there's a fade handle right here. And then on the other side, there's also a fade handle here. So you can fade in 
on this side and you can fade out on this side. Now that we've added music to our project, in the next video let's add some photos and time those photos to the music.